Okay, sorry about that. Apparently there was a We're catastrophic... We're here. We're live. Uh, huge <laughs> catastrophic uh, system meltdown. We apologize for that. Uh, so anyway, my name's Josh. This is my colleague, Aaron. Hey, guys. <laughs> uh, we got a few more colleagues floating around here. Behind the lens is Matt, the director. Our producer for this endeavor, Michelle over here. Everybody say, hi, Matt. Hi, Michelle. So, uh, yeah, it's our first jump into you. Facebook Live, so... Uh, if people still are watching, that's great. We'll, we'll do this again. Uh, Next maybe. time, we will really start at eleven. Yeah. But this was this gave you this is what it really was an attempt to uh, bring up some anticipation, and excitement. So. And we wanted to use that graphic that we put up there. It was a pretty we put cool a lot graphic. of work into that graphic. So. Yeah. But anyway, now. today we're talking about textures in SketchUp. So textures in SketchUp are really important. They perform the essential job of bringing your geometry to life. So as you get better and better at SketchUp. It's important to pay attention to where you find these textures and how you apply them in SketchUp. Uh, it makes your models and your ideas uh, communicate better to whoever you're trying to show them to. That's right. Textures also help you add the next level of detail to your model. So rather than having to go in and model every single little tiny detail in geometry, you can actually take care of a lot of that with a well-placed texture. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. What actually makes a good texture? So right here, I have in the shop, you guys may have uh, remember seeing this from uh, the skill builder that came out a little bit ago. So I have a couple of boards sitting on the table here. One of them is textured with a seamless texture. The other one is not. So here on the right side, you can see this break right here. So this is where the texture is tiling. And because it's not a seamless texture, I get a little bit of a break. So it looks like two different textures right here. This is not a big deal. If I, if I was to use this on this wood, I really like this grain or something, I'd want to go in and reposition it, stretch it out real big so it covered the entire board and I don't see this seam. Sometimes you have too big a space and you have to use uh, some sort of tiling. If this is the case, then you want to use something like a seamless texture. That's what I have here on the left. So you can see this, this uh, texture does repeat. I have a little crack here. I can see it again down here. But between the two, I don't see any of those that, that harsh cut like I have in the right side. So this is a seamless texture. This is really important, like I said, especially if you're texturing a big surface. Something else to consider taking advantage of is transparencies in textures. So this right here, I have uh, my light hanging here. Um, it's actually hanging from two rectangles. So I just have a flat rectangle here and here. This side, however, is painted with this repeating chain link texture. That, ta that, that chain link actually has a transparent background. It's exported as a PNG, which is then brought in as a texture into SketchUp. So it looks like I have a bunch of geometry hanging here. So I can actually take this, sample this, and paint it right onto this rectangle. And then to take that a little bit further, I can actually come in with Erase and hide these two lines. So at that point, it looks like I have a bunch of geometry model. It looks like I have a bunch of chain links. But I didn't have to go through the process of actually creating those chain links, all that geometry. Um, it keeps my model lighter, because it's just two rectangles with a single small texture on it. And uh, I don't have to go through and maintain group, stack, all that big mess, all those extra, uh, extra geometry, if it's just going to be in the background like this. That looks just as good as if I had actually modeled those chains. Uh, let's step back one, one step here, and I'm going to cruise into the file, the import dialog here. So file import. So before you bring in a texture into your model, uh, there's a few things you should know about this uh, import dialog box here. Uh, the first one, it's always good to have all supported image types selected here. That'll make it easy to select any image file that you might want to bring into SketchUp. And then the one below that, you have use as texture or use as image. Uh, for the most part, use as texture is probably what you're going to use the most of the time. That brings in the texture uh, ready to be placed onto a face in SketchUp. Use as image brings it in as sort of pre-grouped geometry. And you might use that if you're bringing in like a, a sketch, a floor plan, elevation that you just want to trace over. Uh, that might be a good choice there. But try them both and kind of see what they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there, I mean, there's a time and place for image. But in this case, if you're actually just pulling in something, you want it to be a texture. That's, that's well, that's why it's called uses texture. Yeah. Suppose. Somebody thought that one through. <laughs> All right. So we are going to uh, hop in here. And uh, we're actually take a look at applying some textures, which is uh, an important part of applying textures. So I have some artwork here in my shop. 
This beautiful uh, 3D Base Camp logo. Um, the logo looks good, the artwork looks good, but the frame is lacking. So we're going to go and bump this up a little bit. Rather than have this stark white, we're going to actually bring import a uh, wood pattern and actually make it look like a nice wood frame. So I'm going to hop in here. And the first thing I want to point out is when I select it, I actually have all that geometry in a group. Um, I point this out because it's real important when I import textures, I have to be in the context I'm going to place the texture. I can't import a texture and put it onto this frame right now, um, onto a single surface of the frame, because the frame is inside of a group. So first thing I'm going to do is double click on the picture. That's going to take me into the context of the group and the geometry that I want to put the texture on. So I can, say I can actually select that now. I'm in, that, I'm in this group. So now I'm going to go in here, go to File, Import. And out here on my desktop, I have this wood texture. I'm going to say Import. And I'm going to pick a point that I want to place it on here. And then I can actually scale it. I can't rotate anything when I'm initially doing this import. It's just a drag to, to uh, scale it. When I click a second time, it's going to paint that entire surface with that texture. This is a seamless texture. Since you don't have a bunch of lines breaking that up, it's actually nice. Nice texture. I downloaded this from uh, CG Textures, which is a really cool site. Just recently discovered it. Got a lot of really good textures up there, and they work great in SketchUp. All right, so I'm going to take that same texture. I'm going to sample it and drop it on that bottom. So that looks great. Looks good. The textures are going the same way as they should. If I take that same texture, though, and I try to drop it on this left side, you'll see my grain's going the wrong way. So I'm going to have to do a little work to uh, position that correctly. I can do this by just right clicking on the surface and I'm come down and click on texture. So when I move over texture, I have the ability, I'm sorry, yeah, texture, position. All right, when I click position, I'm going to get four pins. So uh, you guys, if you've been in here before, you've seen with this, these pins before. Um, we actually talked about them in a couple of our skill builder videos. And uh, I think we pretty much always use the green pin. We didn't really uh, go into these others. So real quick, the red pin allows you to drag and drop the material. Just lets me move it around real simple, just a handle. Um, the blue pin is the scale shear texture. So this lets you do things like I mean, just, whoa, light show. This is crazy uh, moving of that material around. This is actually a really cool uh, function to make your textures unique. So with this, uh, using this one command, I can actually take the same texture and make it look like a bunch of different textures. Um, whoops. I hit the wrong button there. Live. It happens. It happens. Um, <laughs> the yellow pin is a different distortion, so I can actually pull it. It pulls it on a different plane than the blue pin. So like I said, that's, those are nice features to have because it makes it real easy to take a single texture and actually kind of fudge it around. You can use it multiple spots in the same model. The other option I have in here, we've talked about this in uh, some of our skill builders, is you can actually flip these pins from distortion pins to fixed pins. Fixed pins let you actually, just like a pin stuck in like a piece of plastic or something like that, I can actually use that corner to stretch it out and reposition that onto a specific space. In this case, real simple, all I want to do is take this, grab the green handle, rotate it 90 degrees so my, my grain is vertical, and then sample that again from this side, put it over on the right, whoop, try that again. Let's hear it for live, Facebook Live, huh? That's awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> what I did was I think I skewed that a little bit. So let's do that real fast. Position, turn it 90 degrees, sample, and drop it over and right. Now we got a beautiful looking picture frame. Looking good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, cruise over to this wine bottle here. If uh, Some of you may have seen the video we did uh, regarding placing textures on curved surfaces here. Uh, and Gary asked a pretty good question that I'll try to illustrate here. So let's take a look at this area here where I want to place this wine label. I'm going to turn on Hidden Geometry and go back into that Import Dialog File Import. 
uh, find that wine label JPEG, use as texture. Uh, if you're not real careful here, notice how with this anchor point, there actually is a couple different orientations that it can try to conform to. So if I'm not careful, I can do that. It looks like it's going on the right face, but it's actually over there. Uh, that can happen pretty easily. Uh, an easy way to, I mean, if you're, if you're just careful the way that you notice where that anchor point's kind of shifting, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to get it on the right surface. But if you really want to control that, another option is you could group this geometry. So if I click on all of these separate faces, uh, right click, let's make that a group, uh, get inside the edit mode for that, and now try to apply that texture. This way, it, it only has one surface to go onto, so it's a lot easier to cruise down the line and, and apply that there. Uh, another example here I have off to the side next to this uh, delicious bowl of fruit. I've got an apple here. So I set up some projection planes or some reference planes where we can kind of see the difference here uh, based on how a texture is applied to one of these reference planes and then kind of projected on a, an object below. So this one here, if I right click, let's get inside this group. I'll right click here, show you that this one is not currently projected. If I Sample that, apply it to the apple. Whoops. Sample that, apply it to the apple. Uh, it looks like garbage, so we don't want that. Right click, make sure that's projected first, uh, then sample it, then apply it. Looks a little better, but there's a seam in the way there. So, a couple different things I could do here. I could go back into the right click texture position and scoot that over. There's no seam there. Right click done, uh, sample that, then project it. But if you're really trying to control how that texture is conforming to that more complex surface, you can create these other planes here. It doesn't matter where they are. Just kind of trial and error and see, see what changes based on uh, where that first image is being, being placed. So, so, so real quick, Josh, those, yeah. those rectangles are literally just uh, projection planes. They're, just, they're, they're working uh, devices. They don't have to stay in the model. They, they, yeah. What, what could you like? Uh, so you can't actually just delete them. Yeah, I don't need that anymore. You know, once I figure this out, I can get rid of these. Or probably a better idea if if you put them on a separate layer and turn that layer off, then down the line you can go back in and and change those again if you need to. Uh, but so, so in this case, you know, if I just wanted to change the, let's say in this this right click position area, I'll turn off projected. Uh, go back in here. Uh, there's different shading with this red. There's a little bit lighter and darker areas. So just by scooting that around a little bit. It won't change it a lot, but you know there's different ways to kind of. Oops, that one's not projected. So now that it is projected, applying it there, a little bit different. So you could use the same texture and project it onto a bunch of different uh, pieces of geometry and end up with different looking things. Yeah. It's so like all those apples in the back look different, but they could potentially be using the exact same texture. Yeah, I think all those on the green one, it's the same texture, just kind of applied a little bit differently. Awesome. So is it is the, the the reference plane for the texture is that necessary? Is there a way to do that without having that on there? Yeah, we have an example back here is a pillow that needs a little bit of color. Uh, I'm going to apply a texture onto this pillow here. So I'm going to go into the context first of this pillow, go down into the group or the component that this pillow is on. So a few double clicks in there, and I'll turn on hidden geometry. So view hidden geometry. Maybe zoom in a little bit. So in this case, I'm not going to apply this texture initially to some sort of you know, temporary geometry. I'm going to put it right on the pillow. So I'm going to go back into File, Import. Let's see what kind of texture we have here. Oh, look, red plaid. Uh, Josh has a red plaid texture on his computer. Let's, what are the odds of that? Let's give that a go. Uh, I'm going to apply that right to one of these polygons. Uh, so in this case, I'm applying it to a tiny polygon, but I'm actually going to zoom out and kind of see the size of the texture before I actually click the second time. So it's going to place it only in that polygon, but I kind of know roughly the scale that's going to happen there. If I sample this texture now, turn off hidden geometry, and then apply that to the rest of the pillow, looks like garbage. So we need to go back into hidden geometry. Let's right click project that now. Project that. So I'm sampling that projected polygon. The rest of these are not projected, but this one is. If I right click, you can see there's that check mark there. So I'm going to sample that projected one, zoom out a bit, go to view, turn off hidden geometry, and now when I apply it, that looks a little better. I've seen worse plaid pillows. That's, that's pretty good. Much less garbage of a look. Yeah. Yeah. Less garbage going on. 
All right, so in the video I showed how to project. Hey, real quick, Josh, there yeah. is a question. Uh, somebody asked how that geometry was created in uh, that shade there, that, that smooth SketchUp banner. Oh, yeah. Uh, Adam was wondering how you made that. Okay, yeah, so I won't, I won't go through the full example here showing how to project that, but if you just wanted to make this geometry, um, a lot of beginners think that's really hard and they, they avoid you know, learning that stuff, but it's actually pretty easy. In this case, uh, one way I could make it is with uh, an extension here. It's, it's actually my favorite extension. So I'm going to go to View, Tool Palettes, and go to Soap Bubble. And it's not, there we go. There. Uh, so but first I'm going to draw some geometry to get a framework to apply uh, this more complex geometry. So I'm going to draw a quick rectangle here. Push pull that up. Use the arc tool. And Josh is just using native tools here. There's nothing, this is not extension stuff. These are all tools that come with standard SketchUp, rectangle, push pull, arc. And then I'll use the eraser tool to just clean up the rest of the geometry that I don't need. So that was sort of a placeholder just to get those arcs quickly on the right plane. So I don't need this. And so I'm left with a framework here uh, that I want the extension to apply more complex ge geometry onto. So I'll select everything, go here. You can see in the bottom corner here, it's kind of awaiting an input of division. So if I wanted to, I could change the divisions here to let's say 20, enter, and let that go. And just, just something that, uh, just to point out, this, uh, this extension, Soap Bubble, is a free extension. You can get it from the extension warehouse. Um, it's a great extension for making this kind of geometry. It's literally, like Josh has showed, a click, uh, a number here and there, and it creates this beautiful soft geometry. Yeah, another quick example with this one is if I select that, I can actually change the pressure here. So down in the bottom, you can see it's awaiting a pressure input. So I could do something like, let's say 50, enter, or maybe go negative 40. So once you create that, it's actually really easy to adjust it. Um, and then the last step I did here was double click in there, select everything here, right click, and you can go to soften smooth edges. And if you check the soften coplanar, it's not showing up there, but wow, that is a blank box. I think the check mark, the check box is like right there. There we go. <laughs> Cool. So then now it's ready to receive uh, any kind of texture. So don't be afraid to jump into looking at how to make more complex geometry. Extensions can really help do that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's uh, one of the reasons we started doing, we started doing a series of videos called uh, Extension Inspection, which I generally say incorrectly. And the whole idea is to go through and actually show people these extensions because there's so many extensions out there. It's ridiculous how many different awesome extensions have been created by uh, third parties, or some of them are from our own team members. Um, but they're great, but there's so many out there. So we're trying to actually spotlight a couple of those and post videos. So keep an eye out for those on our, on our YouTube page. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, let's see. We got uh, one more example um, I wanted to show. This came from an, a question that we had on the forum. We'll actually hop over here and look at that. A right, quick, uh, while Aaron's doing this, if you have questions, please ask in the comments area. Uh, we're seeing a few come through. Uh, my favorite so far was from Ellie. She said, woo, with a couple of exclamation points. That was, <laughs> woo. That's good, that's good. But yeah, ask away while Aaron goes, goes ahead here. Yeah, this is, uh, we get more out of it when you get more out of it. <laughs> so please ask. All right. Um, so I'll probably say this wrong, Ecaddy, perhaps, on the forum asked a question about projecting uh, a, uh, an image onto a complex surface. So here he had a head, and he had a picture of a face projected on, and he got a, a little back face here. So it actually came up on the, the back of the face. It projected straight through. So we're going to look at that. But I should say, if you don't use the forum, anytime you have questions, uh, how can I do this, can I do this, what's the best way to do this, the forum is an incredible resource. It's just forums.sketchup.com. There's always somebody on there. We have a bunch of gr a group of people we call the sages who are learned SketchUpers who can help you with just about any problem you have. And uh, in case uh, they're not there, we sometimes have team members. Actually, that's, I said that backwards. In case we're not there, the sages are there to take care of you because they're, uh, they're awesome. They know so much about SketchUp. It's amazing how quick 
responses happen to. People all the time get on there and they'll get an answer on a forum, on a public forum in like two, three minutes. It's, it's incredible. Not that I'm setting a standard, I'm just saying it's a good forum. <laughs> Um, so we're going to look at uh, Ikadi's question right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hop right into SketchUp. And I have a scan. I'm not excited about using this example, by the way. But uh, I had the, the only head I had to take pictures of was my own. So what I'm going to do here is I have some geometry. This is from a 3D scan that was done of my head. And a picture, a mug shot of my face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and this texture is set to projected. So just like Josh was doing, I'm just going to come in here and sample it and then apply it directly on there. So that looks okay from certain angles, but an angle that it looks less okay is right back here. So, you look better that way. Uh, so smooth. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really something, huh? So obviously, this is not ideal. What projected... <laughs> Yeah. What projected does is it actually takes that texture and pushes it all the way through as if you're looking straight on like this and casting a light through, it's going to hit this geometry and just smash that image right across there. So what's happening here is it's taking all of the geometry. This would have happened on Josh's pillow too. If we had flipped around to the backside, you would have actually seen, well, it would have been harder to notice the difference because it's a seamless texture, but that texture would have lined up directly front to back. So. Obviously, this is what Ikadi's asking about, is, is there a way to deal with this? And the answer, of course, is yes. Wouldn't that suck if I just said no? <laughs> Sorry, you're out of luck. Thanks for asking, though, Ikadi. Um, all right, so what we have here is that exact same model, but I broke it into two pieces. So you can see this seam going along here. This is just, I just broke it at the polygons. I, I, this is kind of fairly quick, actually. So I have a front texture, or I'm sorry, a front geometry and a back geometry. So what I can do is I can actually take these and apply separate geometries to them, or separate textures, excuse me. So I have my same front mug shot to get uh, projected onto the front, and then I have another shot of the back of my head. This is a hard picture to take by myself too. But I have a picture of the back of my head that I'm going to project onto the back geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by sampling this front texture. Then I'm going to enter context. So I'm going to double click on this front group and paint that on there. OK, so that looks similar to what we saw in the first example. But around the back, you can see everything is still white. So again, sample this back texture, double click to enter the group, paint bucket, paint that on there. And there I'm getting a lot closer to what would be a uh, complete, completely terrifying model. <laughs> All right, so it's, it's OK, but just as a uh, little, little bonus tip here, take this one step further. <laughs> um, I actually took that model into Photoshop, and any place that it was showing up a little short on the model, I, uh, I pulled the texture out a little bit. So what this will let me do is take that. I will apply, and then same thing on the back. Got a couple smudged edges here. Sample that, apply to the back, and what I get there is closer to a complete uh, mapping. And this is, this is just using straight SketchUp. Um, there are other solutions if you want to go a little bit further. So if I want to go beyond just the projected or simple texture, um, and we can take a look at what, what something like that might be. Somebody's oh. saying you look like a Terminator in there. I've been called worse, so I will. I would 100% take that. <laughs> T1000. Yeah, I'll, I'll. I can. I can deal with that. Um, so so yeah. So one of the things that people ask about with, uh, especially when we talk about things like uh, textures, is it comes up all the time is UV mapping. Um, oh yeah. Uh, what, can you switch that over there? You're done. Oh, we're there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. One Ooh, thing we definitely want to mention. The first time we did this or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jeez. It's not like it's live or anything. Man. Uh, so, of course, there's a wide spectrum of people viewing this, this video. You know, maybe you're a beginner, maybe you're an advanced person. So if you've mastered textures and maybe you're looking for a little bit more, uh, one thing you should check out is some extensions. Uh, the one I want to show here is Sketch UV. Uh, we don't have time today to go into the details here, but we'll definitely uh, think about showing this kind of stuff in, in future videos. Uh, so this is something you should definitely look at if you want to take the texture mapping to the next level and really control 
how a texture is mapped across any kind of complex surface. So go ahead and cruise over to this uh, extension here. Uh, play it's on our extension warehouse. Yeah, so I just went there. I used this little icon here. Let's find that. Uh, right there. Or you can go to Window, Extension Warehouse right there. So watch that video. That's a good segue into the kind of the next step of how you really want to be precise and controlling exactly how textures really get placed upon geometry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, uh, that kind of wraps up our prepared uh, presentation. If anybody has any more questions, again, throw them out. We'll, we'll give you a couple seconds. Um, hopefully you like this. This, was, uh, this is the first time we did it. You guys know that. We, we have not done this before, anything like this before. So if you do have any comments, thoughts, uh, what did you like, what did you not like, what could we have done better, what did we do awesome, we're not above praise. Feel free to just send us praise. But uh, throw something in the comments. Let us know uh, how we could do this better, how we could how we could make this as beneficial as possible to you. Or just fun stuff to show live, because we're going to be doing more skill builder videos that Aaron and I think you know, might be good topics to cover in five minutes or so. Uh, but there could be stuff that showing live may be more meaningful to you. And we're happy mm -hmm. to, to try that out and, uh, yeah, give us some ideas. A question that did come in, <laughs> and this is not a unique thing. This, this shows up on the forums, too, is, uh, what about Basecamp? So, oh, we will be letting you know, as we know, what the plan is for Basecamp. It will be next year. It's in 2018. It is biannual, so last one was 2016. Next one will be 2018. But we will let you know as we have more information, too. Coming soon. Yeah, sorry about the catastrophic system meltdown earlier. <laughs> uh, although I'm, I'm glad we got to use the graphic. That, was, yeah. that made it okay. Yeah, first time out, you know, hit a couple bumps. Yeah. So I think, uh, all right, any other questions we could answer now, or are we good? No, okay, we'll, we'll look at these so. offline and, and think about it next time. There's a couple curve aloft ones. I saw a reply there showing uh, a blog post about it. So yeah, we'll make a list of some stuff that we see here. That is a good question. Ideally, um, let's show that. Repeat the question. Oh yeah. So yeah, the yeah. question was, when you're sampling, when you're using the paint bucket modifier key to actually pull a uh, a texture out of a model, do you have to be in context? Do you have to open a group or a, uh, a component to pull that material out? Yeah, we should expand expand on this more in a future video. But to answer that question, this uh, am I being my screen being showed here? Cool. Yeah. All right, so if I sample the brick here, you can tell I'm not actually inside this wall group, because if I double click, now I'm inside that wall group. Actually, not yet. Now I'm in there. So you could sample it here, and you're explicitly grabbing that texture. But you actually can sample the outside of it and apply it there. Uh, but that kind of brings up another point here. If you have entity info open, you should also note that if I click once on this group, it shows the default texture. And if I double click into that you know, wall group, click on the surface, you know, there's the brick texture. So just be aware that you can apply a texture to the external part of a grouper component too. Uh, but to answer the question, you can just kind of sample it that way and, and toss it on new geometry. Yeah, it'll be a little misleading because if the group is textured, when you pick the group from the outside, you'll actually get that group texture, not necessarily the texture that is on that individual face. So probably the safest and Josh, you may agree or not agree, but the safest thing would be to go in and to sample. Yeah, um, I usually do that. You're absolutely sure that you, that's what you're picking. Yeah. It's actually not a real good workflow to color a group. It's actually a better way uh, to go about it is to apply textures to individual surfaces and not the entire group. Yeah. Um, got a couple more questions coming up. Um, there's a couple about... Uh, oh, shortcut of the sample tool. Uh, it's actually not a shortcut. It's a, a modified, so it's a key modifier for the paint bucket tool. So if I go to this paint bucket tool, I'm on a Mac, so it'll be option, or I'm sorry, command on the Mac. You can see that there. Command engages the sample material part of that tool. So it's not necessarily a shortcut. Just There's to, alt on Windows? Yeah, Windows it'll be alt, command for Mac. So just tap in that while you click on another uh, material. We'll sample that. Something to point out is that is the, it is the uh, sampler for the paint bucket tool. It's not to be confused with the other, the eyedropper tool 
that is uh, it's in both Windows and Mac, but it is a different command. Yeah. So that's actually for pulling colors out of a sample on, on the screen. That's a different command than uh, the paint, bucker, paint bucket modifier tool. Yeah, this one here will sample you know, down to the pixel of something else. So if I just click on somewhere part of this wood grain here, I can apply that there. So a little bit different action there, but they, they are both eyedroppers. And if you're curious about keyboard modifiers with uh, tools, you can see when I went to the paint bucket tool here down in the bottom left, SketchUp let, lets you know which key might modify that tool and, and how it does it. So always look down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, something else. So, so uh, I think that's it. So we want to really say thank you. Thank you to everybody who showed up. Um, thank you to Matt Michelle. Thank you. We, I saw we had some uh, SketchUp people chiming in in the comments and answering some questions. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so, oh. so keep in touch with us. Oh, yeah. we have two different 3D mice we're using. Mouses? 3D mouses? 3D mice? Travel edition. Uh, Enterprise. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so most of the animation, just to, one of the great things about SketchUp is you can use it with just a three-button mouse. Use that scroll wheel. It's awesome. Um, but for presentation, that sort of thing, we find it's a little less jarring to use the 3D mouse. It gives you nice, smooth animation around the model. Yeah. Keep All your right. eye on blog.sketchup.com or our YouTube channel. Both. We'll have some more videos both. there. Maybe that will help spark some questions from those videos. Yeah. All right, I think that's all we got, so cheers. Thanks.